Hello everyone. How's it going guys? It's on the 10th of January 2020. It's on Friday. And how's it going everyone? It's happy Friday, right? Happy Friday. All right, all right. All right. Tough Cookie, thanks for joining. Cham and Jerwin, thanks for joining as always. All right, all right. <clears throat> A lot of kumos in the air. <laughs> yeah, that means it's a it's a bearish trend <laughs> in uh, Holland. <laughs> looks like. Yeah, that's that's funny. <laughs> All right, hey Wan, how's it going? Long time no see. Long time no see. VRV, thanks for joining. All right. Yep, exactly, exactly. Raymond, thanks for joining as well. Chuck D, Kendall, Triple Seven, thanks for joining as well. Hamidi san, welcome back as always. Crazy stuff, thanks for joining as well. All right, so it's Happy Fridays. All right, Happy Friday today. <clears throat> it's on the 10th of January 2020 here. And so we're looking into some charts here. So actually, I'm still holding the sell on the euro data right now after the news of a non-farm payroll in the US. I'm still holding it. This is just a one minute chart. So it spiked up as a result based on the news, but it's coming all the way to the uh, bottom here. Almost like 90%, um, like 80 or 90% retracement and the market is going down right now. So I will talk all about this on this live streaming. So, all right. And I've got the T right next to me here, so. It's a very nice, very nice. Okay. All right, so, were you watching the news, by the way, for a non-farm payroll? in the US and also there is a news in Canada too, right? Has anybody here trading US uh, data related pairs right now? It was a little bit of impact in the market, but not so much as I thought, right? Not so much because I think it was uh, beginning of the year and market was not really moving based on the news earlier, but still, you know, it moved like 20 pips I think it was less than like, uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, that was like 15 pips only uh, moved uppers. So data was actually sold. And so that's why Euro data was moving up. But right now it's coming all the way to the downside. So <clears throat> yeah, so let me review what the news was here, right? So. There was a news about 30 minutes ago uh, and that was about the non-farm payroll already earning uh, already earnings and also unemployment rate, right? And basically uh, data was sold because the actual was worse, worse than the consensus and also worse than the previous was also worse, right? both ways and but uh, this unemployment rate was uh, remained the same right it was previous consensus of 3.5 percent and actual um, 30 minutes ago that was 3.5 percent that was on the same level so this news above here non-farm and also average RA earnings these were what made the US dollar to be sold and actually when you look at the market, well, actually, I thought it's going to be turning out positive, but actually, as a result, it was it ended negative here. So that's why um, this is US 100 cash and it was sold. Uh, it, the US dollar was sold like right here. This is five minute and the US market went downwards. And actually, dollar yen 
Dollar Yen actually spiked down. <clears throat> As a result, this is a 5 minute chart of Dollar Yen and it was spiked down like from here to all the way to the down here, uh, the tip of the week, but still it was only like 13 pips and right now it's retracing 100% now. So um, right now looks like the market did not really react as I thought. It was you know impacting the market a little bit, but usually like no from payrolls or un unemployment rate. Uh, historically, that usually impacts the market like uh, 50 or 60 pips, usually. So uh, I was a little bit surprised that there was not so much impact on the market. And I think that was because of the beginning of the year. And it was the first news in this year, 2020. And that's why I think the impact was a little bit limited. So. Yeah, this is 5 minute chart on your data. Data was sold and that's why it spiked up and now it's coming all the way to the downside. Right? So, when I see this one, what I would be thinking is that it's going to continue its bearish momentum because as a result of the news, it was negative, right? It was negative. So, the US dollar should be sold right and it should be continuously sold uh, when the news is usually negative but right now it's coming backwards right the US dollar now is uh, started to be bought again um, even if that the result was uh, you know negative right the US dollar is right now being bought and that's why I think the market momentum right now overall is um, Actually, on this pair, Euro dollar is still biased right now. So yeah, looks like the market is not really moving that much as I thought. And there was there's a 1.11 exact number here, and I was watching if the market will be resisted here, but actually it spiked upwards, and right now it's retracing 100%. So, yeah, I'm expecting still the market to be keep its uh, bearish momentum here. So, yeah, we'll see how it plays out next week. All right. Hi, Mercy. Thanks for joining. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hi, Jupidu. Thanks for joining. And Chuck D. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to you too, and stay gold, stay gold, all right? Thanks for your support, as always, thanks for your support. Look at the price under Kumo and the cross of Tenkan Kijun Sen was above price. You're talking about this, um, um, one minute, was it? Yeah, uh, one, you're talking about this one minute, right? Yeah, but looks like the Kumo is horizontal, so it doesn't mean anything in this case. The Kumo is horizontal, so market is basically in the range now, in the long term, in the long term. Meaning, um, you know, previous 52 candles, and it's not still not renewing either highs or lows here. So that's why Senko Span 2 has been flat, and the Kumo has been parallel, horizontal, so um, yeah, the market overall is still um, in the range, in the range, in one minute chart. So we'll see how, if the market is going to break to the downside, which I'm expecting, but the market might move upwards and break the recent high even upwards because the Kumo is horizontal, right? Market is in the range, so it can go any direction. All right. Hi, Hiep Goldie. Thanks for joining as well. Hi, Muhammad. Thanks for joining. All right. Oh, Jerry, you are uh, buying Euro JP. All right. 63 pips at the moment. Cool, cool. Great, great. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right. Maru Sam, thanks for joining. Zero Sam, thanks for joining as well. You are late. You are late. Yep. Everybody's mad. 
<laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Welcome back. All right, Fred. Hello. Thanks for joining as well. Uh, could you keep? Uh, could you please create a Telegram group chat to cooperate with friends? Yeah, actually, I was doing the Telegram. Uh, actually, I have a Telegram account, but I don't really use it because <clears throat> because um, it's just uh, you know it takes time for me to look at all the messages. So instead of looking at and communicate with Telegram or WhatsApp, I decided to do this kind of live streaming so that I can still communicate with you like this. And if you want to get closer, you can, you know, of course, um, come to my uh, one on one mentoring or group mentoring so that you can be, you know, we can be closer that way. So, yeah, um, I used to do it, you know, um, the WhatsApp, but it was too much. I got so many messages in a day and I cannot keep track. And it's not like win win, it's like lose lose, right? I want to reply to you, but I don't have time. And but I got so many messages, and your questions are important. And what I say to you might be important to you too. But if we lose that chance, then that's like you know, lose lose a relationship here, and that's why. I started to the live streaming like this every day, twice a day. And also I have a question form. So if you have any questions uh, while you're looking at this uh, live streaming, you can click on the link description below. And there is there's a form here. There's a form. If you are using Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and if you have any, any questions uh, when you're watching live streamings or when you're watching my past videos. Whenever you have any questions, use this form to send me any questions so that it will sure to come to my inbox and I will make sure to read through. And also, I will be answering to those questions one by one on these kind of live streamings too. I, I, I did it twice before and I keep getting so many questions recently, so I will be doing it uh, probably sometime over the weekend and also next week as well. But this is, I think, the effective way to actually communicate both ways so that, you know, not only we learn, but also everybody, everybody else can also learn. And that's the dynamic of, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, network here, internet. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you can, you know, take advantage of this form, that'd be great. Okay, instead of just asking me questions through the direct, like, messages. Okay? Okay, all right. <clears throat> so, so. All right. <clears throat> All right. Hi, Jay. Thanks for joining. All right. And I, actually, I'm thinking to build a community, Ichimoku community, uh, sometimes uh, in the future. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. If I can like multiply myself, then of course I can create those closed, um, you know, free like closed uh, message tools. But unfortunately, I cannot divide myself into like thousands. So <laughs> this is the best way to do. All right, Chen-san asks um, how to make the Kumo draw shadow not in uh, not line in MT4. It's your uh, it's your pro private indicator. Could you share it with you? Uh, okay, okay. Um, you're talking about the Kumo, right? Um, yeah. Basically, what I do is um, all right. Let me open up the setup here. <clears throat> I just ch choose this uh, you know up Kumo down Kumo for this uh, thicker the thickest line here. And if I click OK, then it's going to be looking like this. The Kumo is looking like this. <clears throat> so 
Yeah, but when it's too thin, when I get the thinnest here, then the kumo is going to look like this. So you can change the setting to the thickest kumo here, right? And if you click OK, I think it's going to look like this. If it doesn't, then it's the technical issue. So you have to install the MT5 and trade. I think live chat with, yeah, live chat that this was good for live trade too. Yeah, yeah. And I look at the, this, you know, chat box for sure and reply to you guys. So if you can join the live streaming and type your words in chat box, that'd be great. That'd be great. <clears throat> All right, so. Okay, sometimes you have to wait a few days for the uh, five minute trend to synchronize with one hour daily. So how many trades do you have per month? Um, usually, well actually it depends, depends. Uh, and depending on the market trend and also depending on my feeling, <laughs> depending on my feeling. First of all, I only trade when I, whenever I feel like to, so that's a primary thing. And secondly, when there's a market trend in some pairs, then I will be active on trading. So in that case, maybe I will take trades like 10 or 15 per week. But right now, most most of the chart, right, most of the market is pretty much in the range, right? No directions uh, pretty much in daily chart or above. And that's why I'm not really active right now. And it's a good timing to prepare for the PDF on Ichimoku and also, um, you know, uh, maintain my web page and everything. So, and to do this live kind of streaming too. So, yeah, that's why I'm not really active uh, in the beginning of the year usually. Uh, so later in the year, maybe like February or March, I will be more active because usually there will be a market trend uh, at that time. But right now, as far as I see it, there's no like solid market trend. And that, that's why uh, I have to look at the lower time frames, like one hour as a bigger time frame to take trades. And in that case, um, I have to be, um, you know, cautious in front of the chart. And I will be just keep holding the positions for maybe within a day, I will be closing it. Or maybe I will just hold it uh, one or two days and close it. If my uh, primary primary time frame uh, is going to be one hour or four hour, then I will be closing it pretty soon. So yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, I, I'm a day to string trader and I like to hold the position as much as possible, as long as possible. So basically I look at the daily or weekly as a bigger time frame. And when there's a trend, I take trades. And at that time, I will be more active. But right now, um, market is not really moving, uh, you know, towards one direction. It's kind of going up and down on each pair. So, yeah. And actually, this is my second trade uh, for this week. This is my second trade. So, yeah. As far as I see the market right now, so Euro Dollar is the pair that I wanted to forecast today. And also, I will be talking about the the distance, right? The distance between the candlestick and the Kumo. Because this is going to be the third information about Kumo. Because I've been explaining about the direction of the Kumo and also about Senko Span too. So the next topic that you have to remember is going to be the distance between the candlestick and also the Kumo. Because there are some relations to there. So. All right. <clears throat> yep, Chokti, Kagebunshin no Jutsu, right? <laughs> when I can use that, then yeah, I can. Actually, I can go to your house and talk to you guys, everybody, face to face, one on one, <laughs> if I can multiply myself. But unfortunately, I don't have that skill because I'm not a ninja. 
<laughs> Hi, Alex. Thanks for joining as well. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. And thanks for joining from Vietnam. I appreciate your support. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so let's get started for the main topic here. So looking at this daily chart, first of all, all right, this is a daily chart. And let me just delete these vertical lines to just make it clear here. All right. So this is daily. This is daily on Euro data. Euro data and let me pull up the memo here so that we can all know which pair and what time frame we are talking about. So, all right, here we go. And this is so we're talking about US dollar, oh, sorry, Euro USD here. Okay, so let's start over from the monthly chart, the biggest time frame here, right? Let's start the monthly chart here. Okay, okay, so here we go. I will zoom out a little bit here and all right, so we are watching the monthly chart here on Euro dollar and when you look at the Kumo here, right? Just focus on the Kumo for now and when you're watching it, is it moving down or up? Right? Is it moving down or up or horizontal? What is your call? What is your call? So we're talking about the monthly chart now. And when you look at the Kumo here, is it moving up or down or horizontal? <clears throat> Just let me know your answer. Let me know your answer. It's one of these three, right? Down, up, or horizontal. So just focus on the Kumo. And what would you say? Hi, Vail. Um, can you not type the you know multiple messages because I cannot see everybody's comments if you're doing it. I remember you were doing it last time, so if you can if you do it next time, then I have to kick you out. All right, so. So, all right. What is your call? Just look at the Kumo formation right now. And is it moving down, up, or horizontal? Which one is it? So I see horizontal range. <clears throat> horizontal, all right, flat. But with down downwards bias, all right, all right. I see one horizontal, okay. What else, what else? So everybody think it's horizontal? All right, so everybody thinks it's horizontal. Okay, horizontal range, sideways, horizontal. All right, all right, range. Okay, so pretty much everybody thinks it's horizontal. All right, all right. I like this question answer setup you do. It uh, really helps to solidify the knowledge over time. Great work. Sure, sure, Maru-san. Thanks for a compliment. Stay gold, stay gold. All right, so everybody thinks it's a range. So nobody thinks it's down, right? Nobody thinks it's down. And yep, everybody's correct. Everybody's correct here. So it's moving horizontal, right, basically, right? This is moving horizontal. So in this monthly chart, the overall trend is actually horizontal. And that means, right, that means the market can go either up or down. The market can go either up or down, and we never know. We never know. And that's what Kumo telling you, right? 
when the kumo is horizontal and chikou span is also horizontal, right? So in this case, the price can move either direction, up or down, and we, ne we never know. So in this kind of condition, you have to watch out for the volatility here, right? Moving up and down, up and down, and in that case, it can break the kumo upwards and also it can go downwards, right? So that means you cannot trust the Kumo here in this case as a support or resistance here. All right. <clears throat> so, so monthly chart was horizontal and let's move down to the weekly chart here, right? Let's step by, step by one, one by one here. Step by step here. So this is a weekly chart, weekly chart. And when you look at the Kumo here, what would you see? What would you see? All right, just focus on the Kumo direction. And when you look at the candles, oh, sorry, when you look at the Kumo direction, Do you think it's moving up, down, or horizontal? Right? Which direction is it? Hi Raymond, thanks for your donation. As always, you always give me donation. Thank you so much and stay gold, Raymond, stay gold. I wish I wish so much your your trading success. Thank you so much. Alright. Okay, it's down, down, horizontal. Okay, I got, I've got one horizontal and, all right, two horizontal. And down, down, downtrend, downtrend. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Yeah, this was, this might be a little bit of a tricky question. In this case, in this case, um, the Kumo is becoming horizontal now. In this case, the Kumo is becoming horizontal. Um, last time it was moving down, but right now it's becoming horizontal. So you can just recognize this as a horizontal. And yeah, however, right, however, this is stable bearish momentum, right? This is still bearish momentum. The market is consolidating right now because the Kumo is horizontal, but this is stable bearish. And within this bearish momentum, the Kumo is becoming horizontal. The market is consolidating right now. And here is why. Here is why. So um, first evidence is that the Senko Span 2 is becoming flat here, right? Senko Span 2 is flat. Well, actually Senko Span 2 or Senko Span B is the uh, the upper side, right, upper uh, part of this Kumo here is called Senko Span B. And when it's flat, that means the market is consolidating, right? Basically, that when the Senko Span B is flat, that means the market is consolidating right now, right? And that means the market is not really renewing the highs or lows in this case. And that's, that's why Senko Span 2 is flat here. So th this is one of the confirmations uh, for the range, for the range. And also, when you look at the candlesticks, so this is actually the new topic here. This is the new topic. So you know the direction of the Kumo, you know the Senko Span 2. When it's flat, it's consolidation. And I will add one more uh, information here today, right? So when it's on a bearish trend, in this case, this is a bearish trend, and when Kumo is sloping down and when the candlesticks are also sloping down, you have to watch out for these lows, right? You have to watch out for these lows. So you take these lows, you take these important lows, right? You take these lows and you measure the distance between this low to the Kumo, right? To the Kumo. Like this. So when when you were looking at this candlestick right here, when the Kumo was forming was 26, 26 candles ahead, right? 
when you were looking at this low right here, the Kumo was forming 26 candles ahead. So that means the Kumo was forming uh, 26 candles forwarded, right? So it was here. It was here. <clears throat> when you were looking at this low, the Kumo was like this, okay? So you measure the distance between this low to the Kumo and the gap, right? You you see the gap here. And this is pretty wide, right? This is pretty wide. And that means the market is still bearish momentum. It's continuously bearish. So, and this can be the confirmation, right? So the distance between the candle and also the Kumo can tell you also the momentum of the market. And when it's far, when there's a gap, like a wide gap, then that means the bearish momentum is still uh, continuous, right? And similarly, right, uh, in contrast, when the Kumo is moving up, you watch out for these highs, right? You watch out these highs, and you look at the distance, right, between this high to the Kumo, when it was forming, when it was forming, and when the market loses its momentum, uh, the the highs or lows will be getting closer to the Kumo. All right. So if I do it, um, you know, step by step here, if you see this, if you take this low here, and if you again measure uh, 26 bars in the future, it's gonna be on this candlestick right here, right? This blue one. So I put the vertical line here. So this was a Kumo that we were looking at when the market marked the low here, right? And when you just draw the line from this low to the Kumo here, right? Uh, let me do precisely here. So when you draw a line like this, this is still far, right? This is still far. So in this case, so um, when you were actually watching that, watching this low here, you can still be positive when you are selling it, right? Uh, you can still go to bed when you are having sell position here. Or you can start thinking about selling it here. <clears throat> so how about this one, right? This is a recent low on this place and how about 26 candles ahead is going to be on all right on this Kumo right here right so it was somewhere here so when you were watching this low the Kumo was forming here and if you look at the distance like this right like this <clears throat> it's still far right it's still far so you can still be positive right for this uh, bearish momentum in this case. <clears throat> so my expectation, my expectation is that the market will keep going down in this case. <clears throat> so this is something that you can tell from the Kumo and also the distance between the lows or highs. All right. <clears throat> so everybody, everybody understanding so far? And of course, you can draw lines like this, right? You can, of course, draw lines and see if it's getting uh, lower lows here and if it's getting <clears throat> um, uh, lower highs here, right? So this channel actually telling you uh, the market to be bearish too, but also you can take these lows and compare these locations to the Kumo and see if the market is still continuously bearish or not. And right now it looks like it's been touching on this uh, uh, trend line. Uh, I'm expecting the price to be keep going down. <clears throat> so yeah, that way you can create um, you know, the scenario of for the sell in this case. All right. So, but let's say let's say the market will be keep moving horizontal, right? It's horizontal because 
the market is consolidating right now, right? So let's say the market starts to go down, but pushes back up somewhere, right? And in that case, this one is going to be the recent low, or you can even look at this one, right? These ones will be the low, right? And when it happens on the market, that means the distance between the low to the Kumo is getting smaller, right? In this case, it's very small compared to here, right? Uh, it's becoming very small and so as the gap becoming smaller that means there's more chance that the market will be turning to the bullish momentum in this case and when that happens of course um, the single span B uh, remains flat maybe it's gonna be sloping down a little bit but still remains flat and the distance between these lows and Kumo is getting smaller and smaller and eventually the price will be breaking uh, inside of the Kumo and there there might be a chance that it's going to be uh, breaking this high uh, Senko Span B upwards so you have to watch out for that when these lows are getting closer to the Kumo all right So this is something that you have to remember uh, when, so again, when the Kumo is moving down, you focus on these loads and, you know, you take these loads and you measure the distance between the lo these loads and the Kumo. And when it's moving up, you know, in contrast, when the Kumo is moving up, you take the highs, right? You take the highs and you compare the distance between the Kumo and these highs okay <clears throat> because this is actually the time cycle right this is and these lows or these highs can be the time cycle uh, there might be some intervals here so that this this is something that you can be watching to expect the next low is going to be on which date right or which week in this case you can expect by um, you know measuring the, the cycle on the trend so in this case these highs are not really important right when the Kumo is moving down these highs are not really important basically you have to watch out for these lows instead because when the low renews you know uh, even lower, then that means it's the continuous um, bear trend. It's a continuous bear trend. And of course, uh, if there's um, um, like lower highs, if there's a lower highs like this, of course that confirms the market to be bearish. But Ichimoku Kinko Hyo actually focuses on the lows when the market is going down. To make the long story short, <laughs> right? And when it's going up, when it's going up, Ichimoku looks at the highs. If that, re if these highs renews or not is very important than renewing these lows or you know uh, these highs here in this case. So all right, weekly chart it's moving horizontal. Okay. And let's move on to the daily. All right, so this is a daily chart right now. Okay, this is a daily chart. And when you look at the Kumo, first of all, what do you see here? What do you see? <clears throat> so when you only focus on the Kumo right now, on this daily chart, what would you see here? Is it moving up, down, or horizontal? How significant is a single span A? <clears throat> Sometimes price seems uh, 
prices seem to magical roll to the SSA. Other times it doesn't seem to provide any resistance at all. Yeah, yeah. Actually, whether it's on a trend or not is very important. When you look at the Kumo or when you look at Senko Span A or B. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at the Kumo right now, what would you say? What would you say? <clears throat> okay, okay. Up, flat, up. Kumo moving up, up, right? Up, horizontal. All right. Horizontal, up. Okay, so we've got the combination of the up and horizontal answers. So in this case, it's uh, it's uh, a little bit difficult to tell, uh, to be honest, because the Kumo is moving up, but it's becoming horizontal. So <laughs> yeah, I think you, you are all right. Uh, it's either up or horizontal <clears throat> in this case, technically, right? Technically. Before I said it's moving up, but technically it's horizontal. So, and here's why, right? Here's why. So when you're looking at the Senko span B here, it's horizontal, right? The Senko span B is horizontal. And when you look at the low right now, and when it ends up with the low here, right? When you look at the low right now, is it far or closer to the Kumo? Let's say the market will move up from here, right? Let's say the market will move up from here. It, it can go down from here too, right? Uh, there's a chance that the price can retrace to the backside here because Senko Span B is flat. But let's say, right? Let's say the market keeps its uh, bullish momentum in the future. And when it happens, this can be a low, right? The recent low. And when you look at it, the distance between this low to the Kumo, is it far or narrow? <clears throat> is it far or narrow? Just look at this low here, the potential low to the Kumo. Just focus on the distance here and would you say it's far or narrow? All right. Oh, is it too small? All right, let me zoom in here. Okay, is this better now? Yeah, actually, when you're looking at the chart with the mobile, maybe it's too small. All right, so here we go. Right, 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 exactly, exactly. Narrow, narrow, right? It's narrow, it's narrow. There's not much gap in between, right? There's not, not much gap in between. If this candlestick uh, becomes a potential low, right, and if that's the case, the distance to from the candlestick to the Kumo is a very narrow, very narrow. So this can be another confirmation that the market is losing its momentum to bullish, right, to bullish, because even if the market keeps going up, and even if this can be a potential low, still the distance between this low to the Kumo is too narrow, too narrow. So in this case, I'm afraid of uh, buying it based on this uh, location of the low, the potential low. And technically, that's why I say it's horizontal. Technically. <clears throat> but yeah, overall, right? Overall, it's moving up. So even if it, it retraces, it may keep going up. At this stage right now, still, the buying energy is more um, powerful than the seller's energy. But sellers are, you know, uh, getting their energy right now. So this is how you can, um, you know, tell from the Kumo and also the candlestick location here. 
And yeah, in fact, the retracement is pretty deep right here. It, it's pretty deep. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's still dealt for that the market to be keep going up like this. So even if you see the up Kumo here, uh, you have to be doubtful if the price will stop here or keeps going down, right? Okay, so let's move on to the one hour chart. So in this one hour chart, right, um, how is the Kumo now? How is the Kumo, first of all? What's the direction of the Kumo? Up, down, or horizontal? What would you say? If you just focus on the Kumo here, the direction, is it moving up or down or horizontal now? And actually, I'm taking trades based on one hour chart as a bigger time frame. And here's why. Here's why. <clears throat> So just looking at the Kumo's direction, is it going down or up or horizontal? By the way, if you liked today's live streaming, please press a good button, make sure, to keep me going, right? Appreciate support. So down, down, down. Exactly, exactly. It's going down, right? It's going down. Yep. It's so obvious that it's going down. Plus, right, plus, the Senko Span 2 is becoming down here so this is can be another confirmation that the market is pretty strong bearish momentum right now right bearish momentum okay so you're getting it you're getting it everybody's uh, you know moving towards the same direction great 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 so you know what to do right you know what to do you look for the only sell chance in this case you look for the sell chance only by looking at this one hour time frame you never think about buying it whatsoever, right? The only thing that you have to think about is where to sell, where to sell, where to sell, and where to sell in this case. You never look for the buy chance in this case. And you can actually spot the trading edge on the market by looking at even lower time frames to capture the exact spot to sell in this case. So as you can see, like uh, in daily, weekly, monthly, like we had different answers, right? Somebody said it's horizontal, somebody said it's down up, right? We had like multiple answers. But in this case, everybody says it's down. And this is what you want, right? This is what you want. If the Kumo is becoming down clear, that's something that you have to look for, right? You cannot be doubtful. Okay, the Kumo is moving up, but, right? So, but it's horizontal, right? The Senko Span 2 is horizontal, maybe. It's retracing, maybe it's gonna go backwards, um, but the Kumo is up, so mm, what should we do, right? You don't have to have that kind of thoughts, right? And in this case, maybe, you know, there might be multiple answers, but when you look at this one hour chart, everybody thinks it's down, and this is what you have to look for. And that's why I'm selling it. Right, and also, right, and also when you look at the lower part, the lows, right, let me zoom in again so that you can see it more clear. So, when you look at these lows, right, uh, this is, this was the low here, and also maybe this one was a low, and right now it's creating the important low now. Right, so, so there are three lows in the past, and when you see these three lows, is it narrow from the Kumo or far? It's got the distance of the Kumo, uh, to the Kumo. What would you say? Is it narrow or far? So, yeah, um, this low right here, the recent low. When you look at these lows, 
to the Kumo. Is it narrow or far? We need to cut sell. The price was very far from Kumo. Yeah, yeah. I was placing sell right here. This is where I placed a sell. And I'm still holding it. Yep, yep. Exactly. It's far, right? It's far. Right, it's far. <clears throat> So that's why I can still be positive about selling on this market. So I might be, I'm still uh, looking for another sell chance in this market. Right, narrow, far, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. So let's take this one as an example. So when you're watching this candlestick, when you're watching this one, the Kumo was actually 26 candles ahead, so that means it was here, right? It was here. So the Kumo was here when you were looking at this low. Well, actually, when you were exactly looking at this low, this was still the potential low. But when the market starts to go up, then you can be confident that this can be the low, right? So when you're watching this market, right? And when you see this low right here, you see the distance between here and here, and you find it's far, right? You find it's far. It's very far from this these lows, right? Basically. So it's not narrow, it's far. So from here to probably like around here, right? It's very far. And still, right now, it's still far, right? To the Kumo. So you have to focus on these lows when you're looking at the market and if you want to capture the momentum of the market. So the highs can be closer to the Kumo, but actually the lows, whether lows are closer to the Kumo or not, is more significant. More significant. All right. So right now, it's pretty strong bearish momentum, as you can see here. here. Okay. So everybody getting it so far? So far, so good? All right, so let's go down. So one hour, I just take the one hour as a middle time frame, and this is bearish, down, and Let's look at the 15 minute chart here. Let's go down to the 15 and let's see. So when you look at the Kumo right now on this 15 minute chart, what would you say? What would you say? Is Kumo moving up or down or horizontal now? And this is exactly where I start to, uh, start to look for the trading edge on the market, right? We're looking for the sell chance now. In one hour chart, you confirmed the market is bearish. The market is bearish. So you look down to the 15, 15 minute chart now, and you're actually looking for the sell chance, right? Small time frames as an execution, right? To take trades. So with that in mind, with that in mind, when you are looking at the Kumo here, in this 15 minute chart, is it moving up, down, or horizontal? Right, right. So, yeah, Shuki-san, don't worry about it. I will get to get to there. I will explain how I placed the cell by looking at the lower time frames. So, now for now just focus on the Kumo's direction, right? Is it moving up, down or horizontal? Which one is it? Is a question. Actually, you want to sell, right? You want to sell on this market, and you have to look for the trading edge on the sell. 
and you have to be able to identify by the Kumo's formation here. So in this 5 minute chart, uh, sorry, 15 minute chart, this is horizontal, right? This is horizontal. So maybe some, some, some people might say it's down because you, some people only look at this part as a down. So maybe some, somebody says this is down Kumo, but actually you are very right. Yeah, you are all right. When you look at here, the Kumo moved up and right now it's in a range. So basically the Kumo doesn't have any direction right in this case so again what we want to look for is like this kumo right like this kumo everybody says it's down and that was beautiful that was beautiful so we went to have this kind of beautiful kumo but look at the 50 minute chart now this is moving horizontal right this is horizontal definitely so that means we cannot place a sell in this case because the market can either go up or down in this case and the Kumo is not really working in this situation right so you have to look for the Kumo to be moving down to be bearish Kumo right and then you can uh, finally start to look for the trading edge to sell by looking at the candlestick patterns or by drawing lines and everything Right, but at this stage right now, the Kumo is moving horizontal, so you cannot place a sell. I won't place a sell. All right, so how about five minute chart? Just in case, take a look at the five minute chart. So 15 was horizontal. And when you look at the five minute, the Kumo is also moving horizontal, right? This is also horizontal. So that means the market can go up or down we never know i wouldn't know <laughs> if the market will keep going up or down by looking at the five minute chart i wouldn't know because the kumo doesn't say anything in this case he is silent it doesn't you know give us any information senko span 2 is flat right so in this case you shouldn't jump into the market but rather you have to wait for the Kumo to be twisted to the bearish and have to be solid, right? Solid bearish. And ideally, it should be breaking this lower, lower part of the Kumo downwards, right? If the Kumo, the future Kumo can break the lower part of the Kumo downwards, then that means it might be the start of the new bearish momentum. And at that time, I will be coming back to the chart and look for the sell. But in this case, I wouldn't sell because the Kumo is basically horizontal now, right? So actually, I was placing a buy. Hold on, let me go back the chart. I was placing a buy a, a while ago. And here, at this place, I placed a buy. Yeah, I do trade gold. Yeah, I trade gold. So I was placing sell, uh, placing two cells here at the tip of the wick on this five minute chart because I draw the line. I draw the line. Um, yeah, first of all, I was looking at the 15 minute chart at that time. I was looking at the 15 minute chart and I was confirming the Kumo was bearish. I confirmed the bearish Kumo and I confirmed the lows are very far from the Kumo at that time, right? So that's why I was, I can, I could be positive on selling it and I was looking for the sell chance. And I was drawing the line like this, this uh, red line here. And when the price actually touched on this red line, when it touched it, I looked at the five minute chart to further confirm it that was a rejected and when I looked at the five minute chart, it actually spiked up and down, right? And so that's why I placed a sell here at the tip of the wick. And the market actually keeps going down um, until now, right? So yeah, um, so that's why, right? I can be the confirmation that the Kumo is so powerful like this 
when you look at the direction of the Kumo, in, in whatever time frames or whatever currencies, futures, commodities, right, uh, cryptocurrencies, whatever you look at, whenever you see the Kumo is moving down, that's bearish. <laughs> that's bearish. No matter what, no matter, I know, whoever says it's bearish, uh, bullish, it's bearish. And then you look at these lows and make sure these lows are still far away from the Kumo, right? So up to this low here, there was a distance still, right? But when you look at this low, right? When you look at this low, right? Let me zoom in here. So this is a 50 minute chart. And when you see, hold on, where was it? Yeah. When you see this low, this like pin bar here, right? When you see this low, the distance between the low to the Kumo is getting smaller than here. And this is actually when I was thinking about closing the positions or not. And as I keep watching the market, the uh, price has, uh, started to be consolidating. And at that time, by the way, the stop loss was right here, right? Right above the recent high. So it was only like uh, 9 pips of stop loss. It was placed right here. So my stop loss originally, oops, hold on. So yeah, not this one. <laughs> yeah, the stop loss at that time was only like a few pips. <clears throat> like it was like seven or eight pips of stop loss. So even if it, even if it goes, goes backwards, it was okay to me because that was only uh, eight pips of loss. And with that in mind, I was watching the market and it kept going down and kept going down all the way to the current price right now. Right, and at that time, of course, uh, my risk was only 2%. Actually, yeah, uh, my risk was only 2% of my whole capital on those positions, and I'm selling it. Okay, <clears throat> so right now, let's see, I'm having, um, all right, yeah, I can, I can show it to you, I guess, it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, right now, it's not much of like um, pips. I was placing a sell. At this price, 1.11251 one, one, one one, one and 2.41. And right now the distance is, I think it was over 20 pips, right? 23 pips right now. So there was a news here, right? There was a news right here today and before the news happened right before the news happened i moved the stop loss slightly below these positions so that i won't lose i won't lose yeah because based on this big news uh, i can move up and down right uh, without any like technical analysis right it can go up and down and you can blow your account many times but to, so to secure my positions, to secure my capital, I moved the stop loss slightly below so that I won't lose. And also at that time, my running profit was over 20 pips here, right? It was like 30 pips, 33 pips of running profit. And that's why I moved these stop losses to slightly below these positions. And I keep doing it, right? Uh, so that the, the game can be either break even or win game. And if you keep doing break even or win game, you, you win eventually, right? You win eventually. If, if, if your game is like lose or win game, then the chance might be 50-50. But if you keep doing the games, if you keep playing the games under uh, break even or win game, eventually you will be winning and eventually you will be winning big, big. Because you keep following the trend, basically. 
So that's the idea of how I see these uh, multiple time frames with Kumo direction and take tra trays. Okay. <clears> Hi <throat> K. If we see a chart down Kumo on the lower time frame chart, when we look for the trading edge, do we ignore the Tenkan Kijun? Of course I do. Of course I look at the Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen here. Yeah. I just don't touch it because it's gonna it's gonna be too much information. So I'm staying away from Kijun Sen Tenkan Sen and also Chikou Span too. But uh, yeah, of course I I look at it. <laughs> yeah. But right now, I'm only focusing on Kumo. And that's why I don't really touch on these topics. All right. So, yeah, Shuki san, glad you understood it. All right. Uh, more down. Uh, I won't place the stop loss to be right uh, more down because there's no volatility in the market right now. When it's so, yeah, here is how I trace the profit. This is how I trace the profit. First of all, um, based on the Kumo, right? Based on the Kumo, when it start to be bearish Kumo, then that will be one one of the confirmation that the market keep going down, right? And at that time, when I see that kind of momentum, then I will start to think to this uh, now take profit line to be lowered, right, to lower it. So the initial place might be the recent high. So before I go to bed, um, before I go to bed tonight, I will look at the chart again and when it, when it ends to be consolidating still and when the Kumo is still horizontal, when I go to bed, then I will just place these stop losses here. Because if I lower it, if I lower this stop loss to like this level, then uh, th maybe the price might, you know, catch this and start go down afterwards like this. There's a chance for that. There, there's a chance for these profits to be caught, and I cannot extend the profit as much as possible. So in this case, I will just place this stop loss as it is. Because even if, if it's, it's uh, you know, keeps going up, I won't lose anything, right? I won't lose anything. So that's why I will just keep these lines here. But when I go to bed, right, until I go to bed, the market, if the market keeps going down, and if it breaks the recent low downwards, and if the Kumo turns to be bearish, then probably I will move these stop losses to slightly above the recent high so that I can secure some profit and still aim for further profit. And when the market, of course, uh, marks the next high here, then I will move this stop loss to here, to, to this level. I will move it gradually so that I can keep confirming <clears throat> the, the profit, some amount of profit until uh, the trend reverse to the upside. So that's the idea of um, uh, chasing the profit, uh, tracing the profit. So yeah, um, whenever I move these stop losses, um, I look at the Kumo direction, of course. So if you are not in the short position now, would you consider uh, range trading only selling on the 5 or 15 minute chart? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Uh, there are more risk to it in the range trade. So I usually don't trade in the range. But um, when I don't have anything else but looking at the chart, maybe I would just give it a chance to do it by looking at the Kijun Sen, by looking at the Kijun Sen. So when I do that range trading, I don't look at the Kumo. I don't look at uh, the Chikou Span. I only look at the Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, and take trades, take the contrarian trades uh, in the smaller time frames, like, like scalping, basically. But usually, I follow the trend. 
because that's the most time efficient way to take trays and that way I can be peace on the bed and that's something that I prefer but yeah I will show you another uh, on another life how to how to take trays in a range by Ichimoku Kinko Hyo so yeah that's the idea so right now it's in a range it's going up and down so I will be taking a sell from the top or buy from the bottom by looking at the Kijun Sen and Tenkan Sen and especially right especially if this is like a daily chart and if the daily chart on all the pairs that I'm looking at happens to be like this then I will of course look at the daily chart as a range and I take trades a contrarian based on the lower time frames I do that too so yeah it works on any time frames basically So if I understand well, you move your stop loss when there is a new swing low below previous support. Um, not necessarily when there is a swing low below the previous support. Um, it can be along the trend line, the descending trend line, right? Uh, for example, like when when you can draw a trend line like this in the future. And when the price keeps going down along with this trend line, then I can lower, or I can actually trace the profit by placing the you know uh, the stop loss like this. But you know the point is at that time the kumo should be going down. The kumo should be going down at that time. That's a primary condition. And when you when I look at these lows, are far away right it's got the distance between the kumo then i will be keep holding it and i will still be positive to lower right uh, these stop losses to earn more profit to actually secure more profits here over time all right sure i trade with ichimoku-san you're welcome you're welcome hi t Thanks for joining from Thailand. And Hicham, alright. And I will see you on the next live. Stay gold, Hicham. Okay, so yeah, basically that's the whole story. So yeah, again, before I go to bed, uh, right now it's already uh, midnight tonight in Japan. It just turned to 11th. Of January so I will be watching the market and if the market uh, happens to break it downwards and if the Kumo happens to twist it to the bearish Kumo then I will move these stop losses to slightly above the high the previous high and just go to bed in peace to dream about the, some profit here <laughs> and but when it happens to be in the range still when I go to bed then I will probably just you know um, I won't move these lines and just go to bed so that I can still be in peace and have a street sweet dreams okay so I hope you enjoyed the live streaming today as well and I'll be doing it tomorrow too so if you can join that'll be great and finally again if you have any questions about Ichimoku Kinko Hyo please use this form the link is on the description below and you can just type your any questions about Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and you know you can just click the send so that it can come to my inbox and i will be answering to those questions on the future lives so yep it's happy fridays so you know um you have a great great weekend uh towards the next week charge up yourself uh, take care of your family and friends and everybody and until i see you next time stay gold and cheers bye for now またね。